This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're looking back on one of the great Bates sports moments in history, thanks to the women's basketball team's heroics in the NCAA tournament. Plus, women's track and field is sending a pair of athletes to the NCAA championships, and we remember the life and legacy of the great Bates coach, George Wigton. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The women's basketball team defeated Roger Williams on Friday in overtime by a score of 68-64 in the first round of the NCAA tournament on the campus of St. Francis College in Brooklyn, New York. Down by seven with 1.24 to go, the Bobcats rallied and got to within three with nine seconds left. First year, Alexandra Long inbounded the ball from in front of the Bates bench, and a Roger Williams player got their hands on it. The Bobcats seemed doomed. Then this happened. Dahlia gets it knocked away by Barnard. Dahlia comes up with it. Four seconds. Long pass. She's going to have to get it up. Step back three. Ties the game. What a three. Oh, my gosh. We are going to overtime. Mia Roy's clutch shot forced the overtime period, and Bates prevailed by four points. At the postgame press conference, head coach Allison Montgomery spoke about the victory, the third NCAA tournament game win in program history. I mean, that was magic. That was that was um, March Madness. That was so fun. I mean, it was just such a hard-fought game um, by both teams. You know, like I said to them in a timeout, we are clawing for our life right now. Like, that's what every team is doing. It's do or die for everybody. Um, and they threw some things at us that challenged us immensely um, throughout different parts of that game. And so just to stay really in it mentally um, and to fight through all that adversity um, and to just keep giving ourselves a chance to come out on top. Um, you know, those like there's, there's moments that are magic, like me and shot going down, um, us just making the plays we needed to to like get to the foul line, those things that gave us a chance to win. But those, those are awesome moments, but what we talked about in the locker room is like that's, you know, you deserve that when these kids work so hard every single day, like those moments come to you. Um, so I just couldn't be more proud of the way that they clawed through a ton of adversity today. Um, and found a way to come out on top. Mia, take us through the three-point shot at the end of regulation. Uh, from your perspective, take us through that whole play. What happened? Um, I'm going to tell you what I remember of it. <laughs> so uh, what I know is Ari just, uh, the ball was lost down half down like the full court. And then um, she really just chucked it to me. And I saw it going out of bounds. So I just grabbed it with one hand. And I knew we needed to get a shot up. Um, and I just shot it, and then <laughs> people started swarming me. So, Although the Bobcats fell the next day to number seven nationally ranked NYU, it was a season to remember for the NESCAC champions. Senior Ariana Dahlia scored a career-high 27 points and grabbed the loose ball that set up Roy's shot in the win over Roger Williams. Born and raised in New Jersey, Dahlia delivered the best performance of her collegiate career in New York City when it mattered most. And she is our female Bobcat of the Week. Well, what a weekend it was in New York City for the Bates women's basketball team. Uh, second round appearance there after a dramatic win in the first round over Roger Williams. And Ariana Dahlia with us here on the Bobcast. For you, a career high, 27 points in that game against Roger Williams. I mean, coming into the game, first of all, you had a bunch of fans there. You're from New Jersey. How do you, like, sell yourself in? How do you get yourself ready mentally for a game like that with a bunch of people you know in the attendance and it being do or die? Yeah, well, we had so much support, so that was really great. And my mom got a lot of my family and friends from New Jersey to come. Um, honestly, I think just knowing that the game was, like, everything was one and done, so I had to play my best and just be really confident in my shot. And Mia and Meg, like, our leading scorers, they were being defended really well, so I knew I had to step up. And for you, obviously, you know, you've, you've played in the post your, basically your entire career here at Bates. Um, Roger Williams had some really good post players. What was that matchup like from your perspective? I'm really strong, so that's why I'm in the post. I'm not necessarily that tall, um, but they, they were really good, and I think that's why I was shooting outside so much, just because inside was a bit of a tougher matchup. And so when I saw I had a mismatch, that's when I get in the post. But otherwise, I was trying to shoot on the perimeter. And obviously it worked out quite well in that game. I mean, is it, is it just like you're kind of feeling it? You know early on it's going to be working out that day? Yeah, I think hitting early shots kind of gave me confidence throughout the game to keep shooting. Let's talk about that final play in regulation. I feel like that play kind of 
embodies your entire time at Bates, right? Yeah. Battling for that ball. Take us through that foot race into the backcourt. The girl guarding me, she was, I think, six one or so. She was super tall and super lanky. And she when she got that tip on it, I was just like, the play is not over. Like, the buzzer is not going off. Like, we're still playing. So I just trucked down the court. Um, as soon as I got it, I saw Mia. I saw some fans actually in the crowd pointing to Mia. And so much was going on. I just saw her. I chucked it up the court. And she literally caught the ball out of bounds. Um, and when she went up with that, I mean, like, I was just like, what are the chances? Like, she's a shooter. This is instinct for her. And when it went in, it was the best feeling ever. Yeah, when you when you released that ball, were you thinking, oh, no, that's going to the seats or what were you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. not I saw her, like, lean over, like, out, like over the line. I was like, wow, like, she, she, like she's going to make this. She has to. And then, so the, the fans kind of get an assist on that one, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's arms like, pass down that way, pass down that way. <laughs> and then how do you refocus yourself for overtime? I mean, because it, it wasn't the game winning shot, it was the game tying shot, but mm-hmm. did you feel like you had so much momentum it didn't matter? Yeah, when we got into our huddle after that, like, everyone's eyes were just so big. Like, we were so pumped. And, like, we like we knew we were winning the entire game. But I think after that, we were like, no, like, we are winning. Like, this is our time to get everything together. Like, make all of our shots and just be super confident. And the whole team this year at the free throw line did a really good job. And that was the kind of difference in the Roger Williams game, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we practiced that a lot in practice, so. Certainly. And then for the seniors, obviously, the next day, it's tough to come back the next day because Roger Williams was such a tough battle. And then you have to face NYU, who... We, th- we knew Roger Williams was big. NYU was maybe even bigger, right? Yeah, NYU is a super talented team, and it was really tough going from such a high the night before to then going to that game. But I think we just had a lot of defensive laps that we don't usually have, and we weren't hitting shots, and we kind of went a scoring drought, and you just can't have that in a game like that. And it was kind of cool to see Sarah Bennett get in there, right? Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, at that point in the game, you know, like, we were down by so much, and we knew, like, we couldn't come back. There was, like, three minutes left in the game. Um but when Sarb got in and she made that shot, like we were, it was just pure happiness like on the bench. Like we were so excited for her. Certainly. And then for you, I mean, looking back on your kind of your career at Bates, you know, I saw an article about how like in high school you felt like you weren't getting the respect you deserved. Uh, did you being division three level here, do you feel like a lot of your teammates felt that also kind of coming into college was something to prove, sort of? Yeah, I think you know, defense being my game mostly in high school and coming here, coach really empowered me and gave me a lot of confidence. Like, you're a really good player and, like, you you, you, you have the ability to score. Um, and that's, like, what she wanted to see from me this year. I mean, for all of college. First round game in the NCAA tournament, quite the time to have your career high, right, mm-hmm. in terms of scoring. It kind of, like, encapsulate what you've been working towards, I suppose, right? Yeah, my assistant um, high school coach was actually there and he was coaching me and we're super, super close, uh, Coach Carter, and he was actually coaching me in the sideline the entire time. Like, I could hear him in the crowd. So it was kind of like, you know, like throughout high school, like he knew I could always score like that. So it was really nice for him to see me kind of taking pride in defense and offense. Certainly. And then, I mean, how have you seen the program grow from when you first entered, you know, four years ago? Oh, my God. Well, I remember when I first got to Bates my freshman year, and it was early in the fall, and my coach sat my entire class down. And she's like, you guys are going to make such an impact on this program. Like, this is a group that's going to change the culture. This is a group that's going to win a championship. So actually seeing how much our program has improved has been amazing. Like, freshman year, we only won two games. Hmm. Then we won four like, for conference. Yeah. And then this year, we won six. So it's like, you can see the improvement and like in our team culture, how we play, how we are in the weight room. Um, so when we won the championship, it was, I think a lot of people were surprised, but none of us were surprised. It was kind of like, we were meant to do this and we did our job. Yeah. That's what people need to realize. Of course, you know, second round NCAA tournament's very good, but winning the NESCAC title mm-hmm. that might be even bigger, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, making history that, that feels great. Yeah. Take us back to that NESCAC title game against Amherst, a team that you'd beaten once and they'd beaten you once, but it seems like for, for whatever reason, the Bobcats, you, you all matched up pretty well against them. Yeah. I think we had really good matchups and I think we just went to that game. Like we have no other, like like, the only option is winning here. Like, it's our time. You know, they – Tufts, Amherst, and Bowden have been the top three forever now. And we just we just knew it was our time. What was the experience like for you cutting down those nets? Oh, it was just – it was amazing. I mean, just seeing – like, we had so many fans there, so many alumni, just family and friends from all over the place there to support us. So, it was just – it was great cutting it down, looking to the crowd and seeing everyone's face. It was, it was great. Yeah, it must have been nice for you being from New Jersey to have these NESCAC games in Connecticut and then the, 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 the NCAA in New York. I mean, yeah. that, that – that, set up really well didn't it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah after those games they were like we need to play a home more for you like we need to be closer to home for you <laughs> <laughs> excellent and then um i mean you know i guess it just you know thoughts you wanted to share about your time at bates and what's next maybe um you know moving forward after you graduate here this spring yeah um i'm still figuring out what i exactly want to do but i'm definitely looking to grad school mm. um 
Could one more year of basketball be on the table? Potentially. I don't know. I think – I don't know if I'd really want to join another team mm. after Bates. Like, I just love this team so much, and – I just I have great relationships with everybody here, so I think leaving my career off at Bates is is I'm okay with that. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, all right, Dahlia, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcat. Congrats again on a great career and especially a great season. Thank you so much. The indoor track and field season continues this Friday and Saturday for senior captain Elise Lambert and junior Jordan Wilson, who both qualified to compete in the NCAA championships in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Lambert will run in the 800 meters, and Wilson in the mile run. And they both joined the Bobcast to preview nationals. We got a pair of women's track and field athletes going to the NCAA Indoor Championships this upcoming weekend. And Jordan Wilson and Lisa Lambert with us here on the Bobcast. And Jordan, the mile run, what about this event has really appealed to you and what has made it, you know, the, the event you really were focused on this year and you got to nationals in it? Well, I don't know. I think for cross country, uh, like I love cross country. I think it probably is my favorite season, like team wise, but it's also like, the 6K is definitely long for me. I'm more of a short distance kind of runner. Um, although I do think it's funny, and I say this, Elise knows this all too well, that the mile is quote unquote my top end speed. So I really can't run much faster than like the pace that I would go in the mile. But I don't know, it just, it, it just has happened that the mile has kind of, I've just kind of gravitated towards that. It's been the mile, or it's been the mile that I've been ranked the highest in both freshman year and this year. So I don't really know. It's just kind of like <laughs> maybe it's just refreshing to do something shorter after cross country. But yeah. <laughs> and then speaking of cross country, you got to go this past fall, right? So what was the experience like? Oh, it was awesome. I think we all raced really well that day. And the course, I, it was on the same, it was in Louisville. Right. Um, and it was on the same course that we raced my freshman year. And my freshman year, it was super, super, super muddy. And it was kind of just like a sloppy, like just I don't, I don't even I don't even really know but um, it was nice that the course was a lot drier this year and I think we had a really good group of girls who went um, and I think it was all around pretty exciting. Excellent then Elise um, obviously you won the New England title in the 600 meters but that's not an NCAA national event right so it's 800 meters for you um, obviously you're still looking to break a I cost record you're very close. Oh gosh yeah <laughs> I mean <laughs> the curse of the 0 0.02 seconds is really just following me I mean We'll see what happens, but obviously I'm going to try my best and just see what I can get done. But either way, um, it's nice to have someone to motivate me like that, especially because I got to train with Aiden for so long as a freshman. So, you know, hopefully I can make that name for myself. But if not, I'm, I'm in good company uh, sitting right behind someone who's such a great mentor. So, <laughs> no, I'm not really stressed about it either way. I'm just going to try to do my best. Yeah, certainly. And then, um, you know, not to bring back bad memories, but two years ago, you were going to compete in the 800 NCAAs. You were there. You got called back. Do you mind, like, what, what are some memories you have of that weird moment in time? Yeah, I mean, we were all there getting ready to go. Um, and I remember, like, we were all at the facility, which is the same facility we're going to go back to, okay. um, which I have a lot of feelings about. <laughs> but um, we were all there. And I just remember hearing, okay, national championships are being canceled. And we were all like, well, ours already started, right? We're not, we're not, we don't fall into that. Like, they're talking about, like, D1. They're talking about March Madness. <laughs> they're not talking about us. It's fine. And then, you know, we walk downstairs about to leave to have our pre-race dinner. And, you know, we get the word that we're going home. And then we're like, well, okay then. <laughs> um, so that was definitely tough to swallow but we got to get a lot of dessert to make up for it at dinner so that was nice um, so I mean hopefully this will be a reclamation of, sh of sorts to go back to that same place and actually get to race I don't want to jinx anything because at this point <laughs> anything could happen um, if we've learned anything anything could happen so um, being able to I mean like see the track we got we got to see it before but being able to see it and run on it and actually race there is is a nice way to just grab it again, <laughs> get that opportunity again, and be able to rewrite the, the history books <laughs> in Maybe. some sort of way. Yeah, certainly. And then uh, for you, Jordan, obviously, um, you know, the mile. Take us through kind of the process there, prelims one day and finals what? Well, I mean, I have never been in a meet that it's like, that's like I have an individual event where there are prelims and finals. Mm. In all likelihood, I am not set up necessarily to make the final. That's not gonna, that's not just, I don't wanna like write myself out or anything, sure. but I probably <laughs> will not make the final. <laughs> but if I do, that'll be super fun. And it's gonna take literally everything in my legs to even get to the final. So the final is just gonna be a celebration if I, <laughs> I get there. But 
I don't know. I'm kind of just looking at it as the prelim is my race. Mm. Uh, the final is probably not going to be my race. But if it is, it is. So Because okay, what you're seated like 18th out of 20, yeah. right? So yeah. how often do you look at like how, how often people have like been able to jump like that th- that far? Well, I mean... It does happen actually kind of more than you would think Mm. because especially like looking at the field this year, a lot of girls are all within like, I think there, there's like a good, like 10 women all within the same, like two, three seconds. Um, and something like that at a national meet can really get shaken up. Plus like you have some people who are on fire and have great days and some people who don't have such great days and I could be one of either of those people. And so yeah, that's why I say I don't want to write myself out of the final. It's not like completely, it's not completely unattainable, but it's definitely a lofty goal. <laughs> well, I'm interested, I'm interested because you mentioned earlier that the mile, that, that's kind of like the fastest pace you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't necessarily have to worry about overexerting yourself early. You're just going to go all out, right? I mean, sort of, yeah. I think I think the mile, the mile, I always, every single time, I mean, I feel like most runners feel like this, especially distance runners, but like, for a pre-meet, like the day before a meet, usually you do your easy run and then you'll do like strides at race pace. And every single time I do race pace, I'm like, oh my goodness, I am absolutely sprinting right now. <laughs> and it always feels different when you actually get on the line. There's so much adrenaline that it doesn't actually feel like you're like your full, your full speed when you actually get in the race. But it definitely, it it definitely is easier for me to pace the mile than say like the 6K in cross country where I have a history of uh, taking it out way too fast <laughs> and dying in the last mile. <laughs> so hopefully that won't happen because there's only one mile. <laughs> there's only one mile, right, right, exactly. And at least you're seeing fifth, right? Um, and, the, and you got fifth in the outdoors in the 800. Are these similar competitors you faced last spring? Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's like what Jordan was saying. Even if you are expecting to make the final, I mean, again, I don't like to jinx anything. I'm, I'm a big superstition person, so I'm going <laughs> to knock on wood right now. But... Um, it's it's all about the prelim really and just going as hard as you can in the prelim to try to earn that spot in the finals and as long as I can you know run the best that I can run for that day that's all I could really ask for whether that means I end up in the finals or not so I'm not sure if I like having the pressure of <laughs> um, having placed visit for the nationals and outdoor and being seated fifth but it's also nice to have that security of okay I'm, I'm in a good place where I am now so if I just do what I've always been doing and like if I just do what I've done before then like in theory that would put me in the finals and so I just kind of try to keep reminding myself that like I just have to do what I keep doing and try to sort of escape from these expectations and like the pressures of having already come in fifth at nationals and um just kind of trying to value value the sport you know one last one last indoor meet so just trying to have a good time and appreciate it while I can. (laughs) As a first year you did get to compete indoors as part of the DMR that got second what do you remember of that experience? Yeah, I mean, that was great. Um, I was, I remember qualifying for the 800 to go to nationals mm-hmm. for then, too, um, and focusing on just the DMR because I was a freshman, and Jay thought that that was the best course of action. Um, and I just, I loved the team atmosphere. I was hoping that we could do a, some sort of relay this year. It didn't end up working out. Um, it was great to travel with the team. I remember we got a great Airbnb in Boston <laughs> together. It was at Reggie, so all of our teammates came down. Um, and there were just so many great things about being there with people that I'm really excited about um, for these nationals to do with Jordan as well. Just having someone else there, having a friend <laughs> throughout the process and being able to cheer other people on. Um, so, yeah, um, there were a lot of a lot of great things about being on a, a team relay going to nationals. And I get some of that experience this time around with Jordan. So I'm really is, happy. Yeah. Is it set up where you two can watch each other race? I, th- I think so, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Your race is at, like, 1 or something, and I'm at, like, 2.50. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, like, we're not going to check until, like, Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, can't, I can't trust myself looking at any sort of itinerary right now, but, yeah. <laughs> so in terms of preparation, I mean, this week, what do you do? Do you kind of, like, you've done all you can at this point? Or? Oh, man, miles are in the bank. Yeah. Miles are in the bank. My mom always says, hey's in the barn, <laughs> yep. money's in the bank. We put yeah. all the work in at this yeah. point, so now we're just chilling. We're just, just kind of tuning up. Like, yeah. we might do, like, I think we both have workouts today, which just, I mean, every run, I guess, is a workout. I always forget <laughs> that, like, when we're not, when we're talking to people who don't necessarily run, <laughs> that workout just kind of sounds like everybody, the wor- workout just kind of sounds like a run, but a workout just means, like, it, like on, on the track, intervals on the track. Yeah. And that'll be pretty, like, light for us. Our mileage will be down, and we'll just, you know, get some speed reps in, make sure that our legs are still fresh and ready to run fast. But 
for, but yeah, like Elise said, Hayes in the barn. <laughs> Great. Well, any other thoughts from either of you about, you know, making NCAAs this year that we haven't got to talk about yet? Um, oh, yeah. It was, I think, what's, what's interesting about what Elise was saying about, like, we do get a little bit of that team experience, like, getting to go together. I'm yeah. really happy that, like, neither one of us is going alone. <laughs> it was kind of a bummer because one of our teammates, Jill, mm. was ranked 24th and usually so i was ranked 31 and got in um it's top 20 um who get in and then like people will drop it uh and jill did not get in in the 3k and i think that's kind of because trying to run the 3k at nationals is like trying to get into harvard so that's that's a big bummer and i really did honestly expect jill to go yeah we were definitely expecting to have a third along for the ride but uh it's going to be great the two of us either way and hopefully looking towards outdoor we'll see jill there with us oh yeah (laughs) Yeah, she was an all-american obviously in cross country what can you say about what she did in cross country unbelievable right Uh, yeah i mean she's a great runner she just knows how to do every race is always so consistent uh crushes every workout she's She's a little metronome she knows exactly what she's doing and she's just she's She's a great runner. Yeah, and we always we have a joke on the team that like everybody loves Jill. Like she's the most wonderful, like humble, like would never like. She's not. Ne- she never brags. She never is negative. She's just literally the best. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Hopefully we'll see her at Intel was an outdoor for sure. So well, Elise and Jordan, congrats again, and thanks so much thank for joining the Bobcats. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on the tennis courts, the Bates women's team swept Smith and Mount Holyoke with a pair of nine nothing wins on Friday and Saturday. Junior Joanna Atwater is playing at number two doubles and number two singles this season and is off to a strong start for Bates. She was also recently profiled in a Friday feature on NESCAC.com. And today, she joins the Bobcast. I think uh, in Florida, we all um, were facing some really tough competition. So I think that prepared us well and honestly probably made us overprepared to play um, these teams, Smith and Mount Holyoke. So I think we came in... Uh, super aggressive, um, ready to take control of the points, and we were all had really good energy, so it was nice. And then for you personally, take us back to when you were looking at colleges. What made Bates the place for you? Bates was the place for me because I honestly really loved the vibe when I first came here and stepped on campus. I did an overnight with some of the girls, and I immediately felt like I was already on the team and a part of the community. So I thought it was super welcoming, which which drew me to Bates the most. And then how did you start playing tennis growing up? Um, I started playing about when I was seven. Uh, my brothers both played, and I usually kind of followed whatever sports they were doing. And my mom signed me up in a tennis camp, and I slowly started to fall in love with the sport. And then I was reading the profile that NESCAC uh, had you do there on the website and everything. You speak a number of languages, right? Is that right? Or? Yeah, I speak French, okay. and I also speak English. My parents are French, so they spoke both languages to me, so I kind of heard them at the same time. Um, I definitely say my English is better than my French, but I I do speak both languages. That's interesting. So when you, when you were at home, were you speaking mostly French? or Honestly, it was very half and half. Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? Um, I mean, I I enjoyed it, uh, especially I did find that when I came here, though, I started to lose my French because I didn't hear it as much. So I decided, you know, to take some classes because like when you're a child, you can learn the language pretty well. But as you get older and if you don't practice it as much, it's like a, any skill, like you start to lose it. So I think it's important that I, I kept up with French so I can, you know keep the language certainly so where'd you grow up i grew up in new jersey okay new jersey yeah okay, gotcha gotcha and then uh, what's the tennis scene like there our high school team was actually really good we won like the state championship uh i'd say every year i was there and a year before and a year after <laughs> so we were a pretty strong tennis team so i had really good people to practice with one of the girls played at princeton another girl at wake forest so we were we were pretty strong <laughs> and then um obviously we've had you've had an interesting career at Bates so far just because the two seasons have been somewhat abbreviated yeah uh, how how much are you looking forward to you know this full season we have here i'm really looking forward to it i mean the fact that i'm an upper class i'm a junior and this is like my first full season i'm really looking forward to it and based on the, the short season we had last year, what was the NESCAT competition like? Uh, I think we only played like, but like four few, matches. Yeah, yeah, four matches. So we didn't get the full NESCAT <laughs> experience there. Um, but I thought it was kind of like a tease because as soon as we were kind of finally getting into it, it started to end. So I'm excited to 
have a full season and play all these matches and see how we do. So I know you're playing doubles and singles for the Bobcats. Who's been your mostly with doubles so far this year, or has it been a little mix and match for you? Um, in Florida, I played a little with Victoria, but she's taking some time off. So right now, I'm playing with Salma. Okay. And she's a sophomore, and it's been great. I love playing with her. How do you develop uh, doubles chemistry? How do you work doing that? I honestly feel like you either just gel or you don't. Uh And it's super important to gel with your partner because the energies kind of bounce off each other. So I feel like it's a lot of you can test it out with a few people, but some people you just kind of click. So this road, you have a road trip coming up this weekend, right, to Williams and Middlebury. I'm always, I'm sure, tough opponents. What are your thoughts on this upcoming weekend? Well, I am excited for the competition. I know it's going to be tough, but, I mean, that's the way you get better. Just challenge yourself. Um, I think we all are playing great. The energy's been high, so I'm excited. And then um, you mentioned you you have your some good career goals, right? Tell us a little bit about that. You mentioned on the NESCAC profile. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm majoring in biochem, mm-hmm. so I do have an interest in, like, medicine and healthcare. Uh, so after college, I'm planning on, you know, either taking a year off or two and then either going to dental school or med school. And that's something I've been set on for quite a while. So I'm excited for that next chapter as well. So dental or med? I mean, yeah, I'm still debating yeah. it. I'm leaning more towards dental school just because I've had prior experience in a dentist's office. But you never know, honestly. <laughs> Certainly. So what are your classes been like at Bates so far in terms of preparation for that type of path, perhaps? Well, Bates has like pre-med requisites mm-hmm. that – um So there are a bunch of classes that you take mostly STEM-based, and those have been good. You know, I think they are definitely preparing me well. can be challenging sometimes, but like I said, I'm always up for the challenge. And obviously, you know, tennis, you have a fall season and a spring season, so you're fairly busy, and they have what Paul likes to call the investment season in the winter. But um, (laughs) how how do you balance the classes with the athletics? Um, I'd say what I try to do is – you know, kind of get ahead with the classes and on times or days where I have more free time, I use that as an advantage to do like my work. Um, It definitely is tough balancing, but I think that I've, as I've gone older, I've been better about my time management for sure. I talked with Teddy on the men's team about how Merrill's such a home court advantage. Um, What's it like playing there? Because I feel like it's kind of unique in terms of the surface and the lighting and everything. Yeah, Merrill is super, is super unique because our courts are super fast. Mm. And, you know, we have those windows on one side of the, of the gym, which can be a little hard to see sometimes but yeah and then we go to these other schools the courts are like super slow Mm. so I think that's honestly the biggest the biggest challenge we have to make so when we get there coaches like take the time like when we warm up to like get used to the surface see how the ball like lands if it's enjoys the spin this the slicing so I think that's our biggest challenge we have what are some of your goals this year you know what are you working on as a from a tennis perspective Um, I've been working a lot on my serve since the fall. Um, I've been working on that with my coach at home and with coach here. And I think that's super important because, you know, you can get a lot of free points off your serve. And if you start off the serve, start off the point strong with your serve, it's easier to, you know, take control. So that's what I've personally been working on. Certainly. And does a team have any goals you kind of set as a group? Um, as a group, we we have like these three mantras that coach, I don't know if he told you about it, like one of them I said in the NESCAC thing was like be aggressive and relentless mm. and to not be afraid of losing or making mistakes. And so we as a team are, I guess, are trying to have really positive mindset and like have a strong work ethic and then everything else will kind of just like come after that. So that's our goals as a team. Excellent. Well, Joanna, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. In men's tennis, junior captain Teddy Coiti won his doubles match 8-0 and his singles match 6-love, six 6-love six Sunday against Endicott in the Bobcats' home opener at Merrill Gym. Bates swept the goals 9-love, and Teddy Coiti is our male Bobcat of the week. Well, Teddy, we were talking off air. Your first ever match at Merrill Gym, and you're a junior. Obviously, it went really well for you, but what was the experience like? Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, Merrill gets really loud. I'm sure you know that, but um, it was it wasn't the highest stakes of matches going into it. But the whole team had a lot of energy. We were all really excited. We just came back from our Florida trip, so we had a lot of uh, team camaraderie going to the match, 
And um, I mean, just from the first, the start, even the warm up, we were we were we were yelling out there, and it was it was loud. It was really enthusiastic all around. Excellent. Well, the Florida trip. Let's touch on that because you faced some really tough competition down there, right? Yeah. So I didn't. I was actually out with a. I had a pretty gnarly ankle injury okay. uh, at the end of January, so I didn't play any of the matches okay. in Florida. But I was on court. I was watching. I was helping, supporting my teammates on the court. Um, co- coach Gastonge, he had me as like an appointed assistant coach. So I got to see. I got to see all the matches all around. It was it was really high level tennis. Um, going into those matches, we weren't like, you know, there there are another division up. Two of, the, two of the schools, we played at Juco school. Uh, they had a lot of international uh, players coming from all over the world. Uh, but I think the fight we had was, was great uh, across all the courts. We had uh, we had some wins, which we're really proud of because um, we didn't even have a full lineup. Like we uh, first day of the trip, the my partner for uh, the Endicott match, Leo Kufferman, he uh, hurt his finger by like trying to clean off a butter knife. Like the, the, fir- oh. the first morning of the of the trip, so we weren't at a full full roster right. going into it, but uh, everyone had a great had a great time. So what was it like seeing things from almost like a coach's perspective for three matches? It was it was really fun. I mean, I I had a lot of fun watching um, all my all my teammates compete. Um, I kind of had experience last year uh, in the in like du- in the, some of the matches I had I didn't play doubles last year in our short season, so coach let me go roam the courts for a bit so I have experience doing that um but it, it was a lot it was a lot of fun and then so you finally got to get back on the court in competition and so um 6060 in singles is pretty impressive <laughs> yeah I I mean I hadn't I haven't played a real like a full match in almost two months now because of I was I was out and um yeah it was just coach put me at the at the sixth spot I didn't I wasn't really expecting the, for him to even put me in the lineup at all he texted me the night before saying mm-hmm. like how how's the ankle feeling? How are you feeling? I'm like I'm I'm ready to go. So, he yeah, I got the I got the text um, texted the whole team. I was like oh, I'm I'm ready to go. So and then obviously doubles playing with Leo. I mean obviously building that chemistry, right? Yeah, it was Leo usually plays with uh, Cam, another other ca- right. another captain, but uh, Cam was out. We, a bunch of us. I was actually sick with the I don't know if it was food poisoning or norovirus oh. going around campus, but a bunch of us were actually uh, out for that match or for the, the past week. So he, uh, Leo and I never really played doubles together. So he, coach was just like, I, I, don't, I don't know what he was thinking, but it, we did, we did fine. <laughs> we did fine. Uh, out, right? We were going to, we were like, yeah, we never, we can't remember the last time we actually played doubles together. It was probably like a practice freshman year, but we were like, we'll just play simple. We'll make our first serves and returns and we should be fine. Well, it sounds like it was a good match for everyone to kind of get their feet under them after a kind of a, I guess, tumultuous start to the year with illness yeah. and injuries and stuff. It was, it was good to get a, get, get a nice win under our belt. Um, yeah, going into this upcoming weekend, we have two pretty tough matches. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was good to get some good experience. Yeah, because you really haven't gotten to play a full NESCAC schedule during your nope, time here at no. Bates, and now <laughs> now you're gearing up for it, right? Yeah, we had that we had that short season last yeah. year, but there were a whole bunch of variables going into it. You know, we were playing with masks. Obviously, um, tennis is tough mm-hmm. outside. It was in the heat. Uh, also, we were practicing for like an hour. Right. At most, so it was like we weren't really at our full, at our best last last year. Mm. So we were really, we really want the season. Did you get a fall season in, or were you abroad? Uh, I was. I, we had a fall season. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you so, part of that? Yep. Okay. I, uh, we had like it's, it's really short. We had those. We have those indiv- invitationals. Yeah. So um, yeah, we went to Middlebury, and then we had one here, and then we had uh, ITAs. For you, like, take us back to when you were in high school and you were looking mm-hmm. at colleges. What made Bates the place for you? So I was I looked around the the, the NESCAC. I, I, my sister went to uh, Middlebury. She swam there. My brother played baseball at Dickinson College. So I, I was aware of the whole D three liberal arts route, um, which I I really uh, appeal, it appealed to me. And I I took had my official visit here. I, I talked to Coach. I had a, I, had a, I remember I remember my meeting with Coach in his office my uh, senior year, and it was just like the first five minutes. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna come here because. Uh, <laughs> Because I just I just saw myself like uh, being able to develop with Coach here um, at the school. So working with Coach Gastonge, what is he like? Obviously, he's a Bates alum and uh, an All American here when he plays. Oh, he's he's awesome. I mean, he's uh, it's tough. We uh, our assistant coach Sam Woods, mm-hmm. he retired a couple years ago, and so we just have a new we have a new assistant Elliot Potvin. Um, but for the Florida trip, at least it was just Coach mm-hmm. um, handling both teams. So he's had he's had a lot on his yeah. plate. I think I think a lot of it has been. Um, on our own, as he's saying, like we got to be, uh, we got to be pushing ourselves because you know at the end of the day, when you're playing a match, it's your coach he can help you, but you're the one hitting the ball. So we we had we've been driving ourselves um, a lot, but coach has been really really great this year. 
Yeah. So you mentioned that, you know, Coach Gaston Gay coaches the men and the women. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. you all travel to a lot of different mm-hmm. matches together. What's that dynamic like? It's, I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting. I think <laughs> it'll be a lot of late nights where uh, Coach has sent the itinerary for this weekend. I'm, uh, we're traveling with the women's team for uh, Middlebury and Williams, and we're supposed to get back pretty late on, like, Monday morning at, like, 2, 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. So it'll be fun. I'm, I'm sure we'll get a lot of good bonding done. Um, so, yeah. Well, this match this past week was against Endicott was a fairly quick one, but I know sometimes mm-hmm. these matches can last seven hours. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's no there's no time limit on a tennis match, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so you can have you can have some matches you know last like the typical hour and a half to like we have uh, we've had some matches in the past that in freshman year I remember in the fall we had one match where some guy. He uh, his opponent ended up in the ER with cramps because oh it was like a three three hour something match oh and it was God. just grueling. So yeah, it can last a while. And growing up, how did you first get into tennis? So I was I was kind of a latecomer to the sport. I uh, my both my parents played uh, in high school and pretty competitively. Um, so I've always been around the sport. Uh, I never really took it competitive competitively until my high school until like freshman year of high school. I was a I was a pretty competitive cross-country runner before um, I played baseball. I tried a bunch of different sports. Um, and tennis just kind of stuck with me in high school because, you know, I it was down to tennis and running. And my knees were kind of wearing out because mm-hmm. of the different movements. So I was like, I think I had to kind of stick to one, and I, I went through with tennis. So having that running background, though, does that, especially endurance, does that really help? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's, it's a different kind of endurance, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, but definitely for those like those three-hour matches, I was saying those definitely help. It definitely helps. Really? So, what are some goals you have this year? Because it's an interesting dynamic. Because it's all, um, there's no seniors on this group, right, so nice you're seniors. one of the leaders. You're one of the captains. What are some goals you have for yourself and for the team? So, I think it's really like we we have the same team this year and next year. Right. So we're kind of looking at it. At least I am. Um, that it's, it's it's a two-year goal too. So mm-hmm. like uh, whatever happens this year, if we don't what we don't achieve this year, it can happen next year. But we want to. We want to be taking down our rivals, B- Bowden and Colby. Um, we have those in, ho- have those matches home, I think, a- later in April mm-hmm. or early May, maybe. Um, so those are definitely our two on our radar, two big matches. Make a make the NESCAC tournament, you know, make it make a run in those, and um, you know, see where we go from there. You know, it's interesting. Obviously, it's a tennis is individual sport in a way, but it's very team oriented in college yeah. and you're still competing though for spots in the lineup. Do you right. really care if you're at six or one? Does it matter? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I personally don't. I mean, uh-huh. the, we have a, we have a very big team this year. We have yeah. 16, 16 guys and every guy, every, every guy on the team is working so hard for the, for a spot on the team on the roster. Um, and yeah, I mean, there is, there's com- competition in, like inter squad and all that. Right. Um, but we're all, we're all used to it. We all played like USTA, which is like the, the, te- the, the tennis league when you're younger mm-hmm. um, and so we're used to that competition um, but at the end of the day we're all we're all eating together at commons you know laughing yeah. it up so so we're all we're all good friends yeah I guess folks do come into college with like rankings and stuff right, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah I was actually um, we had a, we had a pretty big recruiting class my freshman year mm-hmm. um, there's there's some they're all a bunch of different parameters like different ranking systems that you can be recruited by um, I know coach is really into the fact of into the fact of developing players, yeah. um, which has been his, been a mantra for his, of his for a while, and he's seen results. So I think I think he's got a good um, good logic going into that. Yeah, has he shared stories about players who have like yeah. gone from yeah. like playing like five singles to so, going national? So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> my when I was talking about my one of my visit I visited here in high school with yeah. coach. The first five minutes he told me about uh, the story of Ben Rosen. Right. Who came into into college as a two star, which I came into the college as a two star, mm-hmm. um, and he, you know, ended up being all American. You know, he was he was like basically undefeated at one singles in an SCAC play, like his junior and senior year. Uh, so, and his coach said that like the first five minutes, he's like, I can see Ben Rose in you, and I'm sure he sees it in, in everybody on the team because you know mm-hmm. like, he has that history of developing players. So yeah, there are definitely those those stories. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> what are some areas of your game that you're kind of working on? Um, I'm trying to be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in Merrill, especially, it's more of a fast type of play because yeah. we're on like a track surface and the points are a lot shorter than it would be out- outdoors. So, you know, getting first serve percentages in, um, I think everybody's trying to improve that because, like, once you get the first serve in, you know, get more of a fast type of play. I'm trying to be cr- crashing the net more, mm-hmm. um, but also just at the same time, like, developing my ground strokes even more to be more solid, which is great. 
we've touched on Merrill a couple times because outdoors mm-hmm. at Wall, like, that's like a U.S. open surface. Right, right. Indoor at Merrill, that's like no other surface probably in the country. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's funny. In the in the NES, even in the NESCAC, the uh, a lot of the indoor courses are a track surface, oh, but are. it's different. Okay. It's like ours is fast track, and a lot of the other track surfaces at like Bowdoin or mm-hmm. Tufts are slow track. So mm-hmm. it's it's like our surface is even different from the other other track surfaces. So, yeah. but we love it. We uh, w- it's a tough adjustment coming back from Florida, our first practice. We were basically swinging and missing out there because we weren't used to the timing. But um, right. well, once we get used to it, you know, it's uh, we get those track lights off, we close the curtains, you know, where it's game time. We're, we love it. Yeah, certainly. And I guess by, by the time the match starts, I mean, you're used to it and the other team is exactly yeah. struggles. It's uh, it's it's if you have a bad day in Merrill, you it's uh, your timing. If your timing is that slightly off, it could be a bad day for you. <laughs> so certainly. What are your thoughts so far on like the young season we haven't got to talk about yet? We're in the season now. We're all excited. We're uh, it's you know we've been talking about our off season. We call it the investment season. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we've just like we're we're in it now. So uh, what we've we we got to build off our training. We got to trust what we've done um, leading up to this point. Um, I think so far we've done a great job from Florida from our match yesterday, and I expect that we're going to do great this weekend. Great, yeah, a little clean sweep there on on yeah. uh, little Sunday there for the uh, men's tennis team. Our male Bobcat of the Week, Teddy Quaidy, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. George L. Wigton, a legendary and influential Bates head coach of impeccable integrity and perspective across four varsity sports, died March 1 at age 93. Wigton coached at Bates from 1965 until his retirement in 1996, serving at various times as head coach of six men's and women's teams in four sports, and he remains the longest-serving head coach of men's basketball, 20 years, and men's tennis, 26 years. He also coached men's soccer from 1965 to 1972, women's tennis for eight years, and varsity men's and women's squash as the program's founding coach in 1986 until 1996. He coached and mentored current Bates tennis head coach Paul Gassingay when Gassingay competed in tennis at Bates in the late 1980s. Gassingay became an All-American under Wigton's tutelage, and he reflects on what Coach meant to him and to the community as a whole. I actually met Coach, I was I had to be 12 years old. Um, I was playing a tournament, uh, it was a, I was in the finals of a Maine State tournament, junior tournament, and I was playing at Bates. That was the site, and it was the old court, um, sort of, there used to be a court next to the Roger Williams Hall. And then there was one where Commons is now, and then there was one on Central Ave. There were three courts there, and it was under a big oak tree. It was like, like a really great spot. And so I'm in the finals there, and I remember, you know, my dad always telling me about Coach, but it was one of those moments that he came up, you know, after the match and introduced himself, and it was like he was always like this figure. I was in awe of like just in the community, knowing that he was the Bates coach and he was, you know, just a well-respected coach. And um, so it was like way back then that I met him for the first time. And um, obviously like he started recruiting me and when I was in high school and, you know, I was a really underdeveloped player. I never played indoor tennis until I was a junior in high school. So I was good, but I, I didn't know how good I could be not having had the opportunities to play. And, you know, coach saw something in me and was, was persistent with his uh, recruiting. And um, I just, I fell in love with Bates, you know, Buddy Schultz was a guy that graduated in 81 and I'd followed his career. And I was like, wow, how amazing is that? This guy is like a professional athlete and he went to Bates and that really started piquing my interest. And, and, you know, when coach would offer me, you know, times to come to campus and watch practice. And I remember when Merrill was brand new, I can still smell the brand new rubber floor and uh, everything was brand new. And I'm, I'm watching practice and I was like, wow, these, this is so cool. These guys are great athletes and, you know, like a Greg Otis and what was a a senior um, the year I was, you know, a senior in high school. So um, he was a guy that, you know, as a senior in college, when I, when I was on my visit, overnight visit, he showed me around and, um, you know, you could just tell the character of the team 
they were good guys and they were dedicated guys and um it's something i wanted to be part of certainly you mentioned your dad had told you about coach wigman how did he know coach wigman my dad was a, ten, a local tennis coach he ran the rec department program for decades and coached high school you know lewis and high school and edward little to state champions and you know coach was just a figure you know in the main tennis community um, bates was in running the rec department program we used all the courts and my dad used all the courts in the area, the Bates courts, uh, Holy Family, Holy Cross, Marcotte Park. There were so many courts that, I mean, there were hundreds, it was in the, the tennis boom of the seventies, right? So when I grew up, so everyone was playing, you had to reserve like a week ahead to get a court outside. It was insane. Um, so, yeah, everyone knew coach. And the thing we've talked about coach Wigdon a lot about is how he coached so many different sports, right? He coached soccer at Bates. He coached basketball. He coached, he founded the squash program, basically with first varsity squash coach and tennis, as we mentioned. I mean, you're, you're a coach here at Bates. What does it say about coach Wigdon? He was able to coach so many different sports during his time. Well, he just comes from that old school era. I mean, he was back in the day, you know, playing at Ohio state scholarship basketball player. He was the real deal. And, you know, it was all about toughness. It was all about grit and fighting for a spot. And, you know, the interesting thing is when, you know, he came to Bates and was, you know, kind of thrust into this role of, of coaching multiple sports. And, you know, when I knew him, it was, he had transitioned to tennis, but I knew of, you know, his basketball coaching days, obviously. Um, and, I think the quality that coach had that allowed him to be good at coaching any sport was his relationship with his athletes. And we all wanted to do the best for coach. Um, you know, and the X's and O's are important, but building that team uh, cohesiveness and that family feel that he, he built on every one of his teams. You can see it. We had a, you know, a, a get together with him, gosh, it's, it's over 10 years ago where they were, it was down in the Boston area and we had, you know, soccer athletes, basketball athletes, tennis players, squash athletes, you know, and just like all these different people for over the generations. And they all shared that same feeling about coach that um, you wanted to win for him. He retired in 1996, very next year. You're the head coach at Bates. What was it like succeeding the guy who was you know, such a legend, obviously, uh, not only um, from your point of view, but from a lot of people's? Well, I benefited because the year after I graduated that fall, I actually helped coach out. He was on sabbatical and I helped coach the team. Mm. Um, so I sort of got my feet wet there. Um, but understanding Bates and the culture at Bates and you know, what we had as a team, I mean, we're my junior year, we won the NESCAC championship. It's the only championship we've had in the sport of tennis. Um, and just understanding that, like that lofty goal, it's, it's not easy to, to come by and it's, it's something you have to work hard at. And that was something, you know, from day one that I wanted to, uh, do right by coach. And I wanted to make sure that, um, we continued his legacy of, of national respect in terms of the way our, our athletes were on the court, their sportsmanship, their values, and, um, and having been to nationals four years in a row as an individual athlete with coach, those were very special moments for me. And I knew how hard it was to get there. And that was one of the things I wanted to make sure that we built a legacy in that regard as well, that we had a consistent presence at the NCAAs that we would, you know, challenge as a team and, you know, be that nationally regarded program, but never losing the sportsmanship, the, the representing of Bates in the, in a positive way. And, and the, uh, I think the thing that's, stood out for our teams and all my teams is that they're going to leave everything on the court and they're going to give everything they have and out of respect for each other 
out of respect for, for Bates, out of respect for themselves. And so that's something that coach always instilled in me and something I want to pass down to, you know, our athletes. Well, take us back to that junior year um, with Coach Wigden. The team goes 11-1, and one, wins the NESCAC title. What are your most vivid memories of that season? I mean, we lost one match, and it was the day after final exams. Yeah. And it was to Brandeis, who was a very good team, and it was, I believe it was like a 5-4 battle, um, very close. And, you know, I just – I remember back thinking – if we just had two more days under our, like removed from finals week, we could have pulled that out, but it was, you know, no excuses. It's just, it is what it is. We had it after a tough grueling week of, of academics, but we still fought hard and we were right there in the end and, you know, um, didn't quite pull that one out. And the interesting thing is it didn't, it didn't change the course of our season. Like we still won the NASCAC championship, but there were no AQs and Bates was not allowed to go to NCAAs back then. And so we had a team that was definitely, you know, would have been selected that would have been a contender um, because Brandeis went and did well that year. And so, you know, I think that's always been in the back of my mind too, is that, now that we have this opportunity, I want to make sure that our teams are, you know, in contention for those opportunities. Did Coach Wigan have any sort of, you know, you know, you know, sometimes you hear from coaches like there's, you know, certain sayings they were fond of, anything like that in terms of Coach Wigan? I mean, Coach was just always really supportive. Didn't matter if you're winning or losing. I remember being at Nationals my senior year. I was down 6-0. 15 to the number three seed from Pomona and coach just whacked me on the butt on the changeover said, keep doing what you're doing. And I said, okay, but I got to figure this out or else I'm going home. But it, he knew like I was giving him my best. And, and I think he knew that taking a step back and not putting more pressure on me, but just trying to relieve that pressure and just, Hey, you got this. Keep, keep it up. You'll, you'll figure it out. And, and I did, I won 11 games in a row and ended up winning that match and going through to the quarterfinals and becoming an all American. And, you know, um, I think, you know, that coach put me in that position to, to relax and to, to let my game come out. So. And then we touched on this earlier, but he was the first coach of the varsity squash programs. And you've had some moments where you've coached some squash here as well. But I mean, so uh, can you speak on to that in terms of what you remember from, you know, the early days of, you know, him leading the squash teams as well as the uh, tennis teams? Well, I know when I was at Bates, we had guys that were trying to recruit me to play squash. <laughs> The guys on the squash team. And I was like this single-minded focus. Like I'm now I'm lifting all winter. I'm training all winter. I'm playing matches all winter. And I, I got to focus on my tennis. Um, but Ben Lowenstein was one of those guys and, you know, ended up being, you know, just a, a great leader of that program. And, um, you know, we just had dinner with coach, you know, I have a picture we've had, you know, he, Pat Cosker and I had dinner with coach, you know, like a year ago at Gippers and we just, uh, we all have the same feeling for him. Just, you know, a lot of, a lot of gratitude and a lot of love. Certainly. Well, is there anything else you wanted to mention about coach we haven't got to talk about yet? <sighs> just, just a class act, just, uh, that old school presence that like you knew you wanted to uh, represent him in the best way. And he's just a, a legend in that way. He's like one of those coaches that was, you talk to any coach in the nation and they respected George Wigton. And the players respected him. Our opponents respected him because he always treated players with respect, even our opponents. And he was always courteous and 
you know, I remember going to nationals um, and that Brandeis team had a couple of really good players. No Wakami was not national champion his sophomore year. And, and we would battle twice a year in our tournament final and in our dual match. And we'd always split. And I saw how coach interacted with other teams and other coaches. And, and it struck me because here were are really like, supposed to be the enemy, right? It's supposed to be the, this, this foe that we're trying to beat. And, but we were friends and, you know, coach made sure that that was clear that like, yeah, what's on the courts on the court, but you can still have like a, a camaraderie and a respect for your opponents. And, and we went out I, every national. So we were there together for four years and we'd get dinner together and we'd train together and, support each other even though it was a different school like it was from our region from new england and we were you know and so you know that's something i think my dad instilled in me as well but you know coach reinforced that something i've tried to you know emphasize with all our teams over the years but you know coach was just a, a pillar in the community a pillar nationally and just a great man and he lived a life that um we all should be proud of to, to try to emulate. All right. Well, coach, thank you so much for joining us and reflecting on uh, coach George Wigton and his incredible life uh, in the community and at Bates. Thanks again. Thanks Aaron. In other Bates athletics news this week, the women's lacrosse team defeated Southern Maine 18 to one on Wednesday for new head coach Renee Olson's first win at the helm of the program. Then the Bobcats fell to Wesleyan in their NASCAC opener on Saturday. The men's lacrosse team dropped a road contest at Wesleyan and the baseball team fell in three close contests at RPI. Visit GoBatesBobcats.com or the Bates Bobcats mobile app for all the latest Bates news. And tune in next Tuesday for another episode of the Bates Bobcast. Bates.